One thing that all true Christians will have in common in this life is the inevitable reality that your faith will be tested. God will put you in situations where you will have to uphold biblical truth before people that hate him. Now, we know that not all believers are gifted with the same level of boldness, but one thing we must all resemble is the people that fear the Lord. And this is important because the primary reason why Christians have a hard time defending the gospel is simply because they fear man more than they fear God. So here's a video clip of a woman of God defending the gospel on daytime TV. No, it, on the face of it, it looks like that because, of course, we've always refused uh, a double-bedded accommodation to unmarried heterosexual couples. Why do you do couples. that, though? Why, why are you an FTG? It's Bible-based. It's, it's entirely Bible-based. But, but, you know, as a Christian, uh, surely the God that you worship is a loving God, is a tolerant God. Um, and if, a civil, if people are in a civil partnership, they're obviously in love. So what's wrong with them sharing a bed? I think it's a myth to believe that entirely. Yeah. It's, uh, he's, he is a loving God, that's true. He's a forgiving mm -hmm. God, but there is... And a tolerant one. He is a long-suffering God. He's not entirely tolerant because the Bible is full of cases when he does finally bring judgment about. And we felt that we wanted to, as far as possible, live according to his instructions. And the Bible's very clear about marriage. It's 2013. It's yeah. 2013. God hasn't changed. God, Jesus says he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He hasn't changed. The Bible hasn't changed. And we're wrong. We're, we're living in a dream. If we think that he's changed his laws to suit us because that's not the case at all. I have no intention of defending the Bible. I agree with Charles Haddon Spurgeon who argued it makes no more sense to defend the Bible than it does to defend a lion. You don't defend a lion, you just turn it loose. It'll defend itself. Amen. My defense is of my choice to believe the Bible. That, that, that's what I'm talking about here, why I choose to believe the Bible. And I borrow my answer from the argument that Peter made when evidently the early church was pushed on this very issue of the question of the doctrine of Revelation. 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah.